Nestled in the quiet Berkshire Hills, where the artist spent the end of his career, the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge, Massachusetts interprets the life and work of America's most famous illustrator. One of the museum's biggest attractions, Rockwell's last and, in his opinion, best studio, has just undergone a massive reinstallation and is once again open to the public. I think that the reinstallation tells an important story about Norman Rockwell's life and about the way that he worked and thought about his art. Um, previously, when we installed the studio, it was really to a latter period in his career. It was a time when he really wasn't working very much. And it's likely that family and friends came into the studio and put objects in places where they thought they would look good. But I think as curators and historians, what we really want to do is help the public understand what it was really like in Norman Rockwell's studio at a particular moment in time. Specifically, that moment in time is October of 1960, while Rockwell was working on one of his most influential pieces, Golden Rule. It was chosen for a pair of reasons. First, it marks an important moment in Rockwell's career. During the 60s, he began distancing himself from the nostalgic paintings of American life that had defined his work to that point. He turned instead to social issues, using his simple narrative painting style to shine a critical light on the racism and injustice of the time. The second reason for choosing October of 1960 is purely practical. Normally when doing a historical recreation, curators are working with limited resources and there's a lot of guesswork about what should have been in the room and where it would have been placed. But while looking through archival documents associated with Rockwell's 1961 book, The Norman Rockwell Album, the museum found a treasure trove of photography that is tantamount to a curator's holy grail. Rockwell commissioned his photographer, Bill Scoville, to photograph the interior and exterior of the studio for a very small section of the book that was called My Studio Today. Um, there was only five photos that were actually used in the book, but Bill Scoville took many more that were needed for the book. And in 1997, his collection of photographs, including the ones of the studio, were actually donated to the museum. And so using Bill Scoville's digitized photographs, we were able to zoom in on really important details of the studio, like exactly what the objects were on Rockwell's desk, or exactly which brushes he had on his easel, um, documents that were laying around the studio, um, things like that. Scoville's photos documented every nook and cranny of Rockwell's studio that day, giving curators an incredibly detailed glimpse into the past. They could tell what paintings he had on his wall, where he placed his knickknacks, and even what books were on his shelf, and in what order. The museum staff took these minute details and recreated them with almost obsessive compulsive precision, going so far as to make sure that all of the opera performances coming from the radio in the room were recorded before 1960, lest some opera buff call them out. In order to fully appreciate the level of the curator's success, ask them about the points where they feel they came up short. Rockwell had a bulletin board in his studio that really served as a message board between his bookkeepers and um, his secretaries, and they would um, attack um, current documents um, up to the bulletin board. And we know exactly what documents were on Rockwell's message board, but um, in searching through the archives, those were actually not present. Um, except for one document, so that was kind of disappointing, but we were able to kind of um, determine what would have been on the bulletin board from around that period. The museum's stated goal for this exhibition is to make it seem as though it's still 1960 and Rockwell had just left the room. They come disturbingly close. The empty Coke bottle on the table, the discarded pipe, these little details give visitors the sense that they are trespassing. But at the same time, it's kind of humanizing. It makes Rockwell more approachable less like an icon, more like a man. The numbers 01262 inscribed by his phone are especially telling. For all his ability to capture the American experience in oil and canvas, it appears that even he had trouble remembering his zip code. 